Good morning, everybody. We're going to get started in just a minute or so. Thank you so much all for being here bright and early. Day after election. How's everybody feeling? You see my smile? <laughs> smile of frustration. But I didn't, I wasn't going to get political this morning. I'm sure everybody is happy in one way or the other. Let's see how many we have on the call. Just letting some of the last remaining folks in the room. All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. We'll welcome everybody to a very special Valley Morning Insight this morning. I'm Mark Crefield, your president and CEO, and it is an honor uh, to be with you this morning. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, the chair of the board who will be emceeing today's Valley Morning Insight. Uh, we have Sharon Page. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Mark. Thank you so much. It is my honor to be here this morning as your MC. I hope everyone has plenty of coffee in your system and you're ready to go today and that you got some sleep last night. Um, I know we were up late watching those election results come in, especially the county ones. Man, uh, 10 o'clock, people were still voting. Um, that's a long line. And we're grateful that everybody took that time to exercise their civic duty. Um, you know, it was a wild night last night, historic levels of individuals participating in the election process, both voters and candidates. Um, so congratulations to all of our chamber members who had successful campaigns and were elected. Um, and we appreciate the business minds that you bring to those elected positions. I don't know if you were more intent on the national level or if you had a focus that was a little bit closer to home. But I know regardless of who won or who lost, most of us will still get up every single morning and go out and look to see and serve our clients, our customers, our neighbors, our family and our friends, and how we can work together to support our community. So despite the craziness of 2020, I've heard lots of heartwarming stories of businesses reaching out to other businesses and looking for ways that they can partner together and support each other, families that have gone out of their way to support other families, and obviously lots of individuals who have really extended helping hands to those in need. We love living in the high desert. There's a reason why we all heart the HD, and primarily it's because of the relationships and the community that we have. As we look at relationships, this morning's Valley Morning Insight is focused on a relationship that we've been working on for over five years. And we are so thrilled to bring it to you this morning. Last night's election was hotly contested, but I can tell you that the Victor Valley Board of Directors is unanimous in their support of this merger to bring four chambers together and have one unified voice for our community. We know we're going to have some ups and downs over the next couple of years, and that's true whether we're talking politics or the chamber, but we're also committed to the vision that we have to support our businesses, our municipalities, and our community as one united voice as the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. I'm excited to be your MC for this historic Valley Morning Insight and critical vote that we are going to be taking today. We hope all of you have read through your packet of information that you should have gotten. Uh, we sent it out both through US mail and through email. It included the resolution that establishes the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. Additionally, every attempt was made by our board to reach out to you. Hopefully most of the questions you've already, you have have already been answered. But if you have any additional questions about the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce merger, please ask your question in the chat box we have a number of executive committee members from the Greater High Desert Chamber that will are uh, in the room today that will be jumping in to answer those questions. Or text President CEO Mark Creffield at his number at 707-365-2990. Uh, we need the next slide up. Mark's putting his number in the chat box. It's also on the page. 
And you'll notice these two separate graphics on the slide is how you can access the chat via your mobile phone or PC. And we're gonna do our best to answer questions in the chat box before we call for the vote. We also will verbally ask for questions. Um, if you need to leave the meeting before the vote is taken, please cast your vote by putting your business name in the chat with either a yes to approve or a no to not approve. At this time, I'd like to ask Pastor Rick Stone Street with Valley, uh, excuse me, with Mountain View Baptist Church to lead us in the invocation. Good morning, Pastor Stone Street. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, allowing me to come and uh, certainly excited to be here and be a part of, of what you're doing here and learning more about the community. And uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless our meeting. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we can gather as uh, community uh, members here in the high desert, Lord, and we pray for your blessing and guidance on this special meeting, this historic meeting, that Lord, as, uh, as the chambers uniting together with the high desert, so it could be a better, uh, better able to facilitate and work together uh, to make this a better community. We ask for your blessing, your guidance. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you will sustain our businesses and keep us strong and keep us, uh, uh, Lord, uh, on track with, uh, with your plan and your will. And we ask, Lord, for your blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, I'd like you all to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. So feel free to stand up or remain seated. We have a flag on the um, screen. Please follow me. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all so much. Our very own President CEO, Mark Crefield, will once again be handling the bell ringing duties today. Is this correct, Mark? Yes, but I do not think there is anybody to ring off, so I will just uh, sit here and um, enjoy the show. Okay, well, enjoy that you don't have to do that extra work today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and before we go on, I also wanted to point out, I, I'm remiss in not thanking um, not only our President CEO, Mark Crefield, but also uh, Board Chair from Hesperia, Marshall Haprov, and our entire Legislative Action Committee for all of the hard work to put together an amazing virtual candidates forum for the city of Victorville, as well as they partner together for a candidates forum for Hesperia and Adelanto. We really appreciate um, that effort to make sure that the business community and the overall community was well prepared for the last night's election. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce today's gift card giveaway sponsor, Randy Castillo, the Chief Executive with St. Mary Medical Center Providence and fellow board member. Good morning, Randy. How are you? How are you? I'm great, how are you? Great, so let's kick it off and let's have fun. Um, uh, so the first 10 people who emailed Mark uh, with the correct answer will win a uh, gift card at Starbucks, okay? So here's, a, here's the, uh, the question. According to a recent California hospital survey, what percentage of respondents said they had delayed care or not sought care at all for a serious medical condition because of COVID-19? Is it A, 5%, B, 10%, C, 15%, or D, 20%? Again, how many of the respondents had said they delayed care or not sought care at all because of COVID. Five, 10, 15, or 20, A, B, C, D. All right. So Sharon, would you like me to go ahead and... I'm sorry, Randy, go ahead. Well, where am I on the uh, agenda in terms of uh, our... Uh... You, you have two minutes to talk to us about whatever you would like. Sure, sure. Well, again, thank you for inviting me. Um, uh, uh, it's a pleasure being here this morning. Um, one of the things that we wanted to make sure we, we informed our, our community is that in uh, sometime around uh, December, maybe January, um, one of the big changes here um, at the hospital that you'll see is actually our new St. Mary Medical Center 
um, will will change. Um, although what's important for this community to know is that the hospital is not going to change. Um, back in 2014, St. Joseph Health, their parent company in Providence, uh, merged and formed Providence St. Joseph Health. Um, what, what's been very um, slow and very, um, I would say, probably not a priority uh, five years ago or six years ago um, was, you know, changing the name. What we're going through in the next couple of months is a brand identity change. So our new name is going to be known as Providence. And so we are dropping the St. Joseph Health, but we are going to continue to the same logo. Um, you know, what's interesting here in Southern California is we have 11 hospitals, 26 uh, different medical groups, um, and we all go by different names. And um, this brand, this, this effort that we're about to go through is really to unify all those brands. Um, so whether you go down to, um, to Orange County or LA County, um, know that St. Mary Medical Center is still the St. Mary, Mary, Mary Medical Center that you know of, uh, but we are part of a larger company. You know, we're based in Renton, Washington. Uh, we actually have 53 hospitals, um, all the way from Texas to Alaska. And, and know that when you seek care at St. Mary Medical Center, you're seeking care with a larger network. Um, similar to, you know, some of our competitors, such as Kaiser and, and uh, Tenet and, and those other companies. So I'll pause there for any questions. Randy, thank you for giving us that update and preparing us for that change because St. Mary has been such an integral part of our community for so many years. Um, it's important that I think we all know nothing is really changing. You're still gonna be providing the same excellent level of care that you have been. It's just a name change and really does exemplify that we have a greater resource than sometimes we perceive when we look at the hospital. Absolutely. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. Okay, so today's Valley Morning Insight presenting sponsor is the Don Foresi Charitable Foundation. I would now like to introduce and welcome Dan Tate. Good morning, Dan. There I am. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay, listen, Santa Slay has been around for 25 years. What we do is really an experience. It's not a toy drive. We fulfilled the wish list of over 5,000 local children. Uh, what we do is we get wish lists from kids and we go out and spend $125 fulfilling their wish list. We do this by getting teachers from the schools to identify those kids in need in local foster care uh, facilities. Once the kids are identified, they give us a wish list and we take on the whole family. Santa Claus is pretty important to us. My first job I was ever fired from was from Santa, and that's because I would not rush the kids off my lap. So I always said if I did a toy drive, it would be to include Santa. The kids are given, they're, they're greeted uh, with an with a environment that's not stale, it's not a hand up when they first come. They're greeted by these elves. All these teenage and college students come in and they play elf, they greet the kids, they make them feel welcome. It's never a handout or awkward. There's never any lines. There's never any numbers. The, the, the elves take care of these kids from the moment they walk in the door to the moment they leave, giving them brownies and cookies and refreshments. Uh, the parents really say that uh, they, they're, they're honored by the way we treat them with respect by, by not making them feel like this is a handout. Yeah? Okay. So so the silver gift, you know, we give them a bunch of gifts. And what we found out is when they give us a list, there's a mom's list and there's a kid's list. So in the first year we did this, when they opened up socks or bed sheets, we found out that the kids weren't really excited about mom's lifts. So we wrap their special gift in silver, silver. So when they come, the elves will give them a silver gift and, and they'll open that silver gift on Santa's lap. And I tell you, this is a, just an amazing experience to see kids from, you know, two years old to 17 years old. Uh, unwrapping these gifts on Santa's lap. And, and uh, there's just surprise that we actually went out there and got them exactly. And I say exactly, I tell them, if you want a Barbie doll, tell if us if it's a Mexican Barbie, a black Barbie, a white Barbie. Our shoppers, they call the parents and they make sure that every gift we're getting the kids is something that these kids really wish for and something that they're gonna get excited about. 
Look at that kid. Shoes are our number one request. Last year, we bought 78 pairs of shoes, the name brand shoes. And that's another mistake we made in our first years. We bought them, uh, you know, Target brand shoes. So the kids uh, really appreciate. Now they get, they're really surprised after they get that silver gift and the elves will hand them bags full of other gifts. They, they honestly, when they got the silver gift, thought that was the only gift that they were going to get. One of the ways our community raises money for us is we put these coin jars out in the community. Last year, we raised $12,000. Carlos is one of our, or was one of our biggest supporters till he started his own toy drive. This is the plaque that we give all our sponsors and people that help us. And those are the kids that they actually sponsored. So you, you can see the, this picture really means something to me. This was a mom watching her daughter. And to me, this sums everything up. It's, it's, she was just so happy. And, you know, I, I, uh, I understand that giving gifts is not going to change a life, but I'm all about the process and that these kids seeing that uh, other people care and the dignity and the biggest response we get back from the parents is that listen, you, you, the whole process when we got here, you didn't treat, the, treat us like this was a handout. You treated us like you really enjoyed doing this. And I believe in, in planting seeds. I was one of these kids growing up and I know how much it stayed with me and affected me. So in our hopes of doing this, it's, it's not about handing out toys or one of my supporters said, well, Dan, why don't you go out there and buy bulk toys and you can give out five times as many toys because these kids are just lucky to get something. And I looked at them with sadness. And I said, you know, no, no, wait, you got it wrong. The, the, we're out here to show them respect and that there's hope and there's people that care about uh, listening to them. So no, I don't think these kids are lucky. I think our organization has been lucky. When you see 5,000 kids coming through, and this, this is not a box where they reach in and grab a random toy, it, it, it's, it's really a great experience. And this, in, in, in our way, one of our ways, and the many things we do, this is how we affect the community is through our kids. So thank you, Pat, for letting me present. Don, I think that you are, Dan, I think that the Don Foresi Charitable Foundation is such a great example of how our community does come together. And just one more fantastic example of how we support everybody in the community. And I think it's fantastic that you really are focusing on the dignity and respect of every individual from the youngest one up to their parents. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, hey, we really appreciate um, all the support in the chat on the vote and we're humbled by all your yeses. We're grateful for it. Mark will be launching that poll when we get to the official vote. So I would ask, as much as I love seeing all the yes, yes, yes is coming through, um, please don't add any more because Mark's going to have to scroll back through that chat to see if anybody um, left early. And that was, in fact, their official vote. So, um, <laughs> hey, Karen, uh, but it is absolutely okay. I mean, uh, you know, I think my, my uh, I was, uh, my nerves were getting to me waiting for this poll to launch. And although we will still launch it and allow everybody who has already cast a vote to vote again, uh, the, the, the overwhelming support we're seeing so far for the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce is just incredible. So I just wanted to add those comments, Sharon. Okay, great. I just was worried about you having to scroll back through the entire chat list to verify um, anybody who left early. Oh, no, it's okay. I, uh, it, more than happy to do it. Awesome. Well, I so appreciate seeing all the yeses coming through. I really, this is so exciting for us. Um, next up on my agenda, I would like to call on Ruby Clark, the Chamber's Director of Member Services, to announce the Chamber's newest members. Good morning, Ruby. Hi, good morning, Sharon. Good morning, members. We miss you guys. I do want to welcome our newest members, Management Business Services, Mayor Gabriel, and Simba Center. Thank you guys for joining us. We are looking forward to great things in 2021. And thank you to all of our members that have stuck with us. Very thankful. Awesome, thank you, Ruby. Um, thank you for our new members. And as Ruby said, all of our returning members that continue to support us by investing in the chamber. Um, next up, we would have sound offs, and it appears that our business community is so used to us meeting in person and having to show up early and wait in a long line and cross their fingers that their alarm went off in time to get the sound off 
that maybe we haven't done a great enough job at letting you know, sound offs right now are easy. All you have to do is call or email Mark at the chamber office. Um, if we still have them left, you are in. Um, and of course, pay your money and you get one minute to promote your business, organization, or just give us some inspiring words. So keep that in mind for next month. And now we are at the time where we are going to have our presentation on the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. So Mark, let's roll that footage. For too long, our community has been held back by the lack of a unified voice advocating for local businesses. Now we have an opportunity to change that by unifying our local chambers to become the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. We owe it to our businesses and to the economic future of our region to make this bold move. The local chambers of the high desert have a proud history of supporting local businesses and together we are stronger. As members of the GHDCC, we will become over 700 local businesses strong and represent half a million constituents as we leverage a louder unified voice at the local, state and national level. With one membership granting access to all that GHDCC has to offer businesses, we'll see lower membership costs and a more streamlined and coordinated calendar. Together, we will experience greater and vastly expanded networking opportunities, as well as increased influence and visibility for your businesses. We know businesses are stronger together, and the GHDCC will be a catalyst for business growth a convener for leaders and influencers who make things happen and a champion for a stronger community. Through the GHDCC, we are reinventing the local chamber for the benefit of the greater high desert and our community businesses. To make this vision a reality, we need the participation of all of our members. Be on the lookout in the coming weeks for this mailer from our local chamber you'll find important information on how to vote in support of becoming the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce, as together we unite and amplify our voice. So obviously, you should have already gotten your mailer and uh, several emails and have a lot of information about what the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce is all about. I appreciate all of you who put forth the effort to get here, um, to vote and to show your support or ask questions that you st may still have. And before we get into the discussion and question and answers, um, I will read the resolution. And even before I do that, we need to get a motion to approve and a second so that we can officially enter into this voting process. So can I get a motion to approve? Hi, this is Casey Armstrong with Armstrong Fairway Insurance Agency and also a past chair of the Chamber's Board of Directors. I motion to approve the resolution to establish the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Casey. And can I please get a second? Hi, this is Jan Gonzalez from Victor Elementary School District and immediate past chair of the Chamber's Board of Directors. And I second Casey's motion. Thank you, Jan. Um, the first thing that I'd like to do is, you know, I mentioned that this has been a five year process to get us to this point. So the first thing I'd like to do is call upon the current chair for the board of the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce, Mark Austin, to give us a brief update about how did we even get here? So welcome, Mark. Good morning, everybody. Everybody can hear me? Okay. Uh, joining the Chambers was an idea of a group of business owners, owners over 10 years ago, but the timing to do something at that time just wasn't right. After being on the back burner for years, about three to four years ago, the subject was talked about again. With Michelle Spears retiring, Hesperia losing their CEO, and Mark Kretfield started doing a contract of service with Hesperia, the timing now seemed to be right. After talks with the Riverside Chamber, the idea of a coalition started. At the same time, we were looking into Riverside Chamber, the Greater Coachella Valley Chamber had been formed and was doing well 
with their chambers merging together. An exploratory group visited Riverside and Coachella to look at each setup. We like Coachella's the best and had Josh, their CEO, come up and give a total group presentation. We decided to follow their model, which was a merger. And for the last nine months, we have been working hard putting this together and getting where we are today. Each chamber has to get votes or endorsements of their membership as per each chamber's bylaws. If the vote is to move forward, we will start the process of joining together. This process will take us into next year. There will be bumps in the road, but after we are totally complete, we will be able to show the real power of the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. And uh, this is a great thing, guys. Great thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for all the time and effort you've put in personally to getting us to this point. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, so briefly, you, I know you've seen it several times. Um, these are the main points that we believe are benefits to creating the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce. A single chamber membership fee for your local chambers. And we know we have a lot of chamber members who belong to more than one chamber, and this will really streamline that process for them. We also will be able to offer combined resources, services, programs, and events. Um, as you know, if you've been involved with any mergers, there is a lot of duplication of efforts when we have entities working very similarly in different locations. And by bringing it together, we know we're going to be able to really streamline that um, while we still are able to keep unique events for each of our different communities and municipalities. With last night's election behind us, having a unified legislative voice at the local county and state levels is more important than ever before. And this really brings us as a big dog on the block, essentially, when we walk into um, a state assembly men's office or a state assembly woman's office in Sacramento. When we're representing the entire high desert, we have a much louder voice than when we're four chambers walking into that same uh, office separately. Um, expanded networking for leads and referrals. We have had some members who said, Oh, but I only serve people in my city or in my town. And that might be true today, but we've all seen a lot of craziness in 2020. We've all seen how businesses have had to shift and pivot and start new offerings and look at how do we serve our customers and clients differently. And this is one um, great reason that this is a great time for us to combine together into the GHDCC. And we will still maintain multiple office locations. Apple Valley, Hesperia, and Victorville in the Chamber's existing locations will continue to have a presence in each of those uh, areas. And our next slide, we've had a lot of questions ask us about what is the new pricing structure. So we are streamlining it. We're going to move from nine different levels down to five. We realize that this will mean that some of our members are going to be paying a little bit more in their chamber investment, but we also know that that additional um, investment is carries with it the greater influence and the greater opportunity of being the Greater High Desert Chamber. It's also worth noting the Victor Valley Chamber has not increased membership dues in the last four years. So even if we didn't vote to approve the merger, we probably would be looking at increasing uh, our membership dues just because it's been quite a while. How are we going to actually conduct the vote? What do we need to do to do this in accordance with our bylaws? So um, I hate to bore you with this, but I do feel like I need to um, read through this so everybody is very clear. The voting procedures in accordance with our bylaws, in any proceeding in which voting by members is called for, each member in good standing shall be entitled to cast one vote. No proxy votes will be allowed. At any duly called general or special meeting of the chamber, 5% of members in good standing shall constitute a quorum. These bylaws may be amended or altered by a majority of the members at any regular or special meeting 
Providing the notice for the meeting includes the proposals for amendments. Any proposed amendments or alterations shall be submitted to the board or the members at least 10 days in advance of the meeting at which they're to be acted upon. And our majority is a simple majority, 50% plus one. Of course, we are hoping for a lot more than that. So just one clarification on that, the proxy votes is um, we're, we know we have members from, um, multi, we have multiple uh, attendees from the same single chamber member company. We're requesting that only the primary contact or designated person cast their vote on behalf of the company. The no proxy vote simply means that a member who's not in attendance cannot provide their vote to another member to cast for them. So you can uh, cast it for your company. You cannot have your um, vote be voted on by somebody else. Um, based off of our current 468 chamber members, our quorum requirement would have been 24 members. And I can see we have way more than that on the call. So thank you so much for everybody showing up today. We mailed out letters on Tuesday, October 20th, and then emailed our members on Monday, October 26th. So we more than complied with the 10 days in advance notice for the meeting. And here we come. The ability to vote in today's poll is only available to members who are on the call using their computer, tablet, or smartphone Zoom app. If you have called in on your telephone, not on the app, you have to dial the telephone number to attend you cannot participate in the poll because you can't see it. So in order to have your vote counted, please email Mark at the chamber after VMI with your vote and the phone number you called in on so that he can verify you were on today's call and will record your vote. Before we go to questions, let me just remind you, we know there's still many details to be worked out. We're gonna do our best to answer any questions that you have and it's now time to see. Did anybody ask any questions that haven't been answered yet? Mark, any questions? Well, the only question we've received so far was from Steve Orr who typed, what are we voting on? <laughs> 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 Sorry, Steve, I had to, had to do it, but I, am, uh, I am, have not received any questions. Uh, I have not seen any questions in the chat and I have not been texted any, any uh, questions as well. Um, so we might be able to get to that vote that much quicker, but I just wanted to comment that um, just a few little details um, to kind of hitchhike on what Sharon and Mark had also said that um, we are going to continue the Apple Valley, uh, Apple Valley, Victor Valley, and the Hesperia offices will still remain open. Um, we will have staff in each of those offices. Um, there are still a lot of details that still need to be worked out. And this is one of the first step towards the million of details we need to, to work out in order to uh, become the greater high desert. And again, I am uh, uh, so encouraged by the overwhelming support thus far. And, uh, you know, but just because you don't ask your question right now during this call, please reach out to me if you have any questions or comments and I will get you your answers. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm, I'm so excited that we are at this point. As the chair of the board for the Victor Valley Chamber of Commerce, it is my honor to call for the vote. I will now ask President and CEO Mark Crefield to launch the poll. And everyone, you have uh, a few um, seconds or so. Uh, he, I don't think he's going to give us you know, multiple minutes of silence while we all vote. Um, so you have a few seconds to um, vote. So if you're pouring your second or third cup of coffee, please put it down and come vote. Uh, give me one second. I'm having a problem with the poll. Crazy as that would sound uh, in this 2020. Hold on one second, please. What? Tech issues in 2020? How can that possibly be? And I'm excited. I'm excited that you guys don't have questions because that means that the information that we've put out has answered all of those questions. All right, let me let me try again. That was very, very, very weird. I'm getting a message that's saying that, unfortunately, that uh, I'm logged in from another advice. Your polling session is inactive. So I do not understand why I'm getting that message. Hmm. Jenny, as a co-host, you can't launch the poll on your end, can you? And you're, uh, are you logged in on, uh, 
your own account. Hmm. Well, this is getting anticlimactic. Please, everybody, vote in the chat box. And again, I, <laughs> you know, uh, everyone who knows me knows Mark, that. I, Mark, I, let me see. I think I can launch it. Let me see. Did it launch? Oh, yes. Yes. Good job. Yay, everybody, please, you're viewing the questions. We would love to have 105 votes. Um, of course, we do want most of them to be yes, if not all of them to be yes. But if you have any uh, questions following today, please reach out to Mark or to any of your board members. Um, we so appreciate each and every one of you. Hey, Jenny, make sure you snap a picture because as a host, I can't see the launch of the poll. How many votes are we up to? We're at 78, 79. Oh, great. You can't see the, the poll, Mark? You know, why am I not shocked <laughs> that this is going to happen <laughs> to me? And if well, you let, look wait, at my tell you camera that. very closely, you'll see that I'm starting to turn a different shade of red. But uh, well, I can tell you that that right at the moment we have 85 of 85 yes votes. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. 81 81 percent of the people on the call have voted and it is unanimously yes. Wonderful. Well, Jenny, if you could snap a photo of that and uh, I will go I back will to too. the chat log. I will uh, record any votes for people. And again, if you called in, remember if you dialed in, please, uh, email me with your phone number that you dialed in on with your um, yes or no vote and uh, uh, the motion passed, Sharon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot tell you how excited your Victor Valley Chamber Board of Directors is that um, you have passed this. I see some nods from those of you who are on the camera. Um, this really has been a true um, labor of love for all of us coming together and really looking for how we can best support the high desert community and uh, the business community and everybody that is involved with the chamber. So thank you so much for all of that. Um, Mark, chamber update. Well, I forgot I had a, a role in this too. <laughs> I, I, I'm a little overwhelmed right now, folks. I mean, um, I, I just thank you all for your overwhelming support. Uh, this is the first vote of uh, four votes that need to happen between the four chambers in the high desert. And uh, I, I truly am overwhelmed. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I did want to mention that um, Accolades Awards, uh, we are going to do Accolades Award in December. I believe it's uh, December we're doing the second week in December, the second Wednesday, uh, December 9th. The applications for nominations, if you'd like to nominate any of the business, any business or any individuals for the Spirit of Victor Valley Chamber Award of Excellence, Small or Large Business, Most Inspirational Leader, or Volunteer of the Year, we are asking that those nominations are due back to the Chamber by this upcoming Monday. So please, you know, if you have any name of somebody that you think is deserving to be nominated, but maybe you don't have enough information about them, email me their name or the business name, and then I will reach out to them and let them know that uh, a member wanted them to be nominated for the, one of these awards. So again, accolades in December, it will be via Zoom. Uh, hopefully it'll, we'll be back uh, sooner than later. I keep saying that, but uh, I'm gonna keep saying it. And then one of these days we'll be back. Uh, the restaurant discount cards, we're still selling. They're only $10. They don't expire until June 30th of next year. Uh, for many of you businesses out there, this might be a great uh, item that you can purchase for your employees. Again, still plenty of time to use some of the great details from Hesperi and Victor Valley businesses. Uh, we have a coffee break updates coming up this Friday, November 6th. Uh, the registration went out yesterday and will go out again tomorrow. So please join us for the coffee break update. For those of you on this call that may not have ever attended a coffee break, it's a very unique um, uh, update from the city of Atalanto, the city of Hesperi, city of Victorville, and the town of Apple Valley, as along with your chambers of commerce. Uh, great opportunity to get updates from all uh, four entities up here in the high desert. Uh, and lastly, we, we're continuing to do our Friday e-blast. So if you have a flyer or you want us to link your website to our weekly e-blast, this is free for our members, for the Hesperi and Victor Valley chamber members. So Again, sorry, I'm so flustered right now, Sharon. I'm just so excited that everything went really well and 
I just can't wait to kind of unmute everybody, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, again, accolades on December 9th. Jenny, go ahead and stop the PowerPoint so I can get ready to, to see everybody. Uh, thank you so much, MC, Sharon, Page. Thank you. Did a great job. Thank you so much. Presenting sponsor uh, today, the Don Farisi Charitable Foundation. Thank you very much. Okay, you can all unmute yourselves and uh, thank you so much for your overwhelming support. Uh, Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce coming soon. So goodbye, thank everybody. You, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Great job, Sharon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Everybody. This is exciting. <laughs> Almost unanimous. Almost unanimous. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, I'm we're very excited. Very excited. You're so cool. Thank you. Can't wait. All Can't right. Wait, Have a good day. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you. See you all soon. Hey, take care.